they dumped General Garner after a few weeks and brought him in. And here he is. Here he is. On his throne. On his throne. He's on a throne surrounded by Iraqis. Would the Senator yield for a question? I'd be happy to yield for a question. Can the Senator refresh my memory? Was Mr. Bremer the recipient of a gold medal or something from the President? Didn't he receive some high uh, decoration and medal for his performance uh, in Iraq? The, the answer is yes. He received that, but I assume that uh, you would expect that from somebody that had a throne while he was over there. Well, isn't it also true that George Tenet, who was responsible for the intelligence that was so bad that led us into the war in Iraq, didn't he get a medal from the president the same day? That is true. Hmm. Did Michael Brown with FEMA receive a gold medal in the White House before he was dismissed? I don't. Re I, don't I don't. I don't. I don't think he did. I think even though he's doing a heck of a job, I don't think he was. Uh, he obtained a medal from the White House. So to, apparently, these gold medals, if they're being awarded for incompetence, they miss Mr. Brown. But they did meet. Uh, they did give them to Mr. Bremer. Oh yes. Uh, the article goes on to say, I say to my friend and anyone within the sound of my voice, it says. To recruit the people he wanted, O'Byrne, sought resumes from the offices of Republican congressmen, conservative think tanks, and GOP activists. He discarded applications to those his staff deemed ideologically suspect, even if the applicants possessed Arab language skills or post-war post -war rebuilding experience. Smith said O'Byrne once pointed to a young man's resume and pronounced him an ideal candidate. His chief qualification was that he had worked for the Republican Party in Florida during the presidential election recount in 2000. I'm not making this up. I mean, you know, this, this is uh, hard to comprehend. May I, will the oh, Senator yield for another question? I'd be happy to. I, I'm trying to recall the exact number, and I don't, but it, it was in the billions of dollars of money that we gave to the president for the reconstruction of Iraq. Is yes, that not true? It started out at $18 billion. But as the, the senator from Illinois will remember, uh, part of that money was used, uh, uh, stacks of $100 bills were used for, they, that's what they played their football games with there, with some of the American and uh, the contractors who were sent over there, some of these same people. And it's also true, is it not, that the Democratic Policy Conference has been holding hearings, in fact, I think is the only agency on the Hill holding hearings on this waste and abuse uh, this profiteering and corruption at the expense of American taxpayers and even equally important, more importantly, at the expense of our troops. I'll see you, my friend. <clears throat> this war, approaching three and a half years, there has not been a single congressional oversight hearing on the conduct of the war. Uh, you know, th this war has now cost us about American taxpayers about $325 billion. Not a single congressional oversight hearing on the war. I asked the senator from Nevada if um, he might comment on this as well. Are we not in a situation where the president has told us that he wants to, quote, stay the course in Iraq, and Vice President when asked a week ago, said he wouldn't change a thing in the way they've done this war in Iraq, is it very clear that if, unless there is a change in leadership in this town soon, we're going to continue down this disastrous course, exposing our soldiers uh, to danger every single day, their families to the anxiety of separation, and the taxpayers of this country to billions and billions of dollars more being spent that don't make us any safer? I would say to my friend, I spent the weekend reading a book. I did some other things, but I spent a lot of time in an airplane. It's called Fiasco, written by a man by the name of Ricks, who has spent his life uh, covering military things. He's written books on the military. I don't know what his political persuasion is. It's on the, this book is on the bestseller list of the New York Times. And in this book, he talks in such detail about what has happened as a result of the incompetence of this administration to our valiant fighting men and women over there. I would recommend that book to anyone. It's a, it's a searing indictment of this administration. And it, it's in keeping with what this article is all about. Uh, another paragraph, one former CPA employee 
but an office near O'Burns wrote an email to a friend describing the recruitment process. I watched resumes of immensely talented individuals who had sought out CPA to help the country thrown in the trash because their adherence to the President's vision for Iraq, a frequently heard phrase at CPA, was uncertain. I saw senior civil servants from agencies like Treasury, Energy, and Commerce denied advisory position Baghdad that were instead handed to prominent RNC Republican National Committee contributors. One staffer said, I'm not here for the Iraqis, I'm here for George Bush. This is a, Mr. President, I say, this is a really a sad commentary. Important jobs like rebuilding the Iraq stock exchange given to applicants who agreed with the President Roe versus Wade. Qualified individuals were turned down for jobs they didn't vote for Bush in 2000. The children of the President.